What's up guys? Today we're playing some Dragoner and I kind of get to experience the seasonal mechanic at the first hand this time. Dragoner does this thing that many other similar style games do, that there is seasons and when you get the new season it fully resets or partially resets the progress that you have made in the game and that's exactly what it does on Dragoner as well. You don't lose your champions, but you lose their levels. And you also do lose your artifacts, but you get like tokens based on how many of them you had unlocked, and you get a better start on the next season. And Dragoner also does this interesting mechanic that you don't just skip the old seasons as a new player, but you get to experience them in row so even though i didn't start when dragonair was released i didn't miss out on the all seasons so right now i'm starting on the season two and not on the most current season or it's the most current season on my server but not on the first servers but anyway let's see what's going on and thanks a lot for dragonair for sponsoring this video make sure to download the game from the link in description it, if it seems interesting to you. I don't have any promo code today, so sorry about that, but Bruh. let's log in and see what the new season unfolds. This is my second season in Dragoner, so I haven't experienced the reset before. Okay, let, let me just double check that it actually did reset the season, right? Okay, everybody is at level 1, so it did. And I actually just recently pulled my first legendary champion <laughs> right after they did the event with Heliolite. Not the event, but just permanent update with the Heliolite dice or the Starlight dice. You didn't used to be able to get legendaries with Starlight dice. And when they did the update, they gave everybody 100 starlight dice and of course i happen to get a legendary with those so that was pretty cool the pool for them was kind of limited to be fair and you could only get a couple of the first legendary champions so they weren't the top ones the one that i got i guess is pretty good but not a top tier champion but it's a good way to start out the new season okay let's open up with the summons and Wait, okay, I only have like one summon. I thought I would have multiple summons, but I guess I don't. Because it's the new season. Okay, we need 15 or more to get epic champion. And I have never gotten epic or leg legendary from this summon before. Wait, can we even forge items? I don't think I have like any... Do we get anything to start out? In? Okay, it's not even unlocked, even though it shows it, but I actually don't have it unlocked, so... I don't think we should have any other freebies, do we? No. Yeah, everything is new, so there's no, no freebies to get. Mm, okay, there's something. There's always so many events that it gets a little bit... Confu okay, this is just today. This gets a little bit confusing to start off. Okay. Wait. Okay. I just didn't untick all of the boxes, but I, that's all of the events. Okay, let's get to the actual... Um, story progression. than I could ever put into words. The world knows only your famed feats of yore, but I am not among the common folk, for I know so much more. Come now, leave it to me. 
Your faithful bard shall regale thee. Oh, he's gonna go through my past progression? No? Okay. I don't... I don't need to know about that. I know I'm a noob, so... One legendary and 20 epics obtained, so I'm not the most endgame player, for sure. Ah, splendid! Magnus. Your stupendous legacy makes Bahamut stumble and brings tears to your strict mother's eye. Okay, it sounds kind of sarcastic when you flatter it like that. Is the new season gonna be different than the old one, like the start? What? There's like a song and I can just skip to different parts. Okay. Haven't seen that before. The bells ring out, our time is up, and so our banter ends. Okay, and do I start out with the same tone that was the first tone last time? Or is there something new? I, I have no idea. I haven't looked this up. Past is far behind you. Now the season dawns anew. Journeys yet untaken, still await you. Okay. So kind so souls such as you shouldn't be waylaid by nameless folk like me. Be off on your way now. Voices of the plains decree. W <laughs> waylaid is such an odd word. I think I have like only heard that once before and. If you're an old gamer, you might know a game where, like, it's super frustrating, but when you move in the map, every time you move, you get this message that you have been waylaid by invaders, and and then you have to do a battle. It, it was kind of, um, it was funny, but it gets super old when you play BG1, when you get that cutscene and the battle and the message every time. You get that like hundred times when you play it. Anyway. Once again you traverse the plains and arrive at a familiar place. Okay, so we start at the same tone. From the path ahead, you sense that it is coming from the direction of the blue oak. Okay, can I reclaim some artifacts with the old tokens? Let's check out that mechanic. Oh, okay, this is not the right spot. Where can I see the old... No? Okay, here, it must be here. Wait, don't I... No? Okay, here, right? I feel like I should have some tokens at the start of the new season, but I guess I don't. Maybe I understood the mechanic wrong. Anyway, let's... Let's join all of the stuff. 
There should be just like one button and claim all of the rewards because there's so many random rewards from some collective events that you don't even have to do anything for that other people have already done for me. I guess we get an easy start with some extra items that we can craft at the beginning. Is that all? No? Okay, that's it. Okay, last time I went with uh, Charisma build, and I think Charisma and Vision. I think this time we're gonna go with Charisma and uh, Strength. Let's go with those two. Wait, how, how much can I put in one stat? Okay, 20 is the maximum. Yeah, okay, let's go with this. I'll go with a little bit dexterity later. No, not that it's that big deal in Dragonair, but it's part of the RP aspect, I guess. I think it affects some of the world events, but I think you're able to do them even without um, even without winning the check with strength or charisma or something like that. Just a bit differently, or you need to like encounter them multiple times to be able to finally get it. Anyway. Okay, that, that took like, I don't know, 15 minutes to get all of the free stuff that we had. Wait, is there more? As you can feel that power resonating with you. Okay, that's the layer of the boss on this. Um, wait, do I have rewards here? Okay, nice. That's the Emerald Breath. It's the dragon that is the final boss of this uh, chapter. This part of the game. I think it's a chapter, yeah. But at least last time we need to take a stroll through through this entire sect before we can actually actually go battle it here, so it's gonna take a while. So long have we been awaiting your arrival. We're much obliged that you answered our call, Master. The child of chaos. Okay, that's a good response, but what's in it for me? Everything. Everything and anything. All of creation. Okay, can you give me like a thousand Heliolite dice then? I shall upend this rotten order and forge a radical world. And you are the key to it all. Our Pathfinder, the child of chaos. The time has come. Now, make the right choice. Oh, ah, oh. I thought it would give me the option to either team up with them or not, but I guess we're just going to battle right away. I. Oh, there's no need for alarm. It's merely a little test. Mm, okay. I pro if I had like the two options to either be befriend them or become enemies with them, I probably would have chosen to be friends with them anyway, so... Okay, we have everybody at level 1. I guess it doesn't really matter what we go with, but... Uh, I guess if we want to use the... the new poison champion, do we need to go with like a frost team? Or the affinity bonus. No, that's not frost, that's lightning and frost. And it's the frost and light, yeah. Uh, okay. I think the starter hero was bad as lightning champion, but I think we're gonna go with that, I guess. I think it was fire and poison last time as combination together, so now it's different. Die. 
I like to take the initiative. He he's some I think his name was Talvar. I think he's some kind of like support with like debuffs and CC or like a tank, so it's not like a nuker. I don't think I have good nukers on the lightning affinity actually. I'll have to look it up li later. But I kind of do want to use my legendary champion, so I guess we'll just go with what we have. By light, oh, Both of those are <laughs> supports, and fresh blood. I don't even know what that orc is. He's just something I pulled recently. I haven't used him before, but I guess that's what we're gonna go with. Wait. <laughs> So some of the 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 co common common champions can be good that I know from experience they can be way better than the normal ones so I have to look all the lightning affinity commons but I, I think I did it once before and I think all of them were pretty bad I think on some yes. I'll try my best. some other factions there was some good good commons but I don't think on this one also I I hope that this orc champion is like a nuker because I think everybody else in my team is like a nu uh is not a nuker. Nobody else is nuker. I hope he is. I think we have like one tank and three supports and whatever the mystery orc champion is. Okay, that's a good start for the new season, I guess, to play this complete noob. This is the more casual approach. This is not the prior hard approach that I have looked up all of the guides or the tier lists and theory crafted a team. I would I did that last time, I will do it later, but this is a total random team. I just want to use my <laughs> Legendary poison champion. Yes, this power, it is you, the child of chaos, my scion. But it is not enough, not enough. Your power, it extends far beyond this. I have come to guide you, my scion. I don't think that's the. Emerald Dragon, if it still exists in the same place. That was a different voice, so this is some other boss, I assume. There is no one in sight, yet a voice is echoing in your mind. The voice brims with authority, as if it could shatter any object and drive one to their knees. Wait, why are we not getting any voice dialogue anymore? Pretty much everything in... What? What happened? What? We started out at the old spot the and suddenly we are on a beach? By, what? And once again you peel your eyes open. Your feet are planted on a soft sandy beach was that like a memory of the past and we just really redid it and now we're actually in some completely new place you have no idea why penultima has brought you here but for now it seems moving onward is the only option okay i guess the starting location is different i'm still kind of curious that don't we get some kind of start up with the Oh we, oh, we do have the old artifacts. Okay, now I get it. I think we... I guess we have them, but... We don't have tokens to buy new stuff. Okay, that's how it works. Oh, we do have some... Some points in the arena shop. I guess we can... Buy a couple Heliolite dice. Oh, there would be an artifact as well, but... I have nowhere near enough points to get that. Oh, you can only buy one Heliolite dice. That's too bad. Oh, 
Okay, that's all of those tokens. Is there anything else? Okay, that's it. Let me check my champion. So, do they still have that? Oh, I guess I need to unlock the artifacts. Yeah, the, I think they're not unlocked. I do. Do I still have gear? No, okay. Gear is reset. That I kind of expected. Anyway, I guess I don't need to have any kind of gear or artifacts or anything at this point. It's so early that it's... It can't be that hard, but I... Friend from afar. I remember last time when I started out, it was super hard. An enthused male voice pipes up from a short distance away. You look toward its direction, only to see a man in a cage. Kind soul, would you be so kind as to lend a hand? And ship this cage. I say, why aren't you coming over? Do you want me to bend my knees? How's this? It's a rather proper kneel, wouldn't you say? Okay, he's rather calm <laughs> being in a prison like that. It's a weird, um, weird way to murder the boss, but okay. The, the, these are almost this almost seems like a trap that he's uh he's trapped in the cage and he's been so polite about it and not really in a rush and I would be kind of scared to actually help him in like a actual situation this seems so th th this seems like seems like he's the evil witch and he's gonna eat me or something like that if I touch him. Wait, what? I don't need the help menu, I just want to... Oh, okay. Can I not free him? Do I need to be on here? Okay. How can I be this... Noobie? Okay. After it didn't work, I had to actually... Click on it on screen, okay. A little ah, bit clunky. Azure skies, golden beaches, and not an iron bar in sight. The name's Filto. A pleasure to meet you, my friend. Oh, you don't know? Sounds like you're one of those poor wretches who got lost at sea. This is Inquescent, part of the Aethercane, the last sacred land in Adenthia, in the realm of the Sheen Elves. Sunbathing, savoring the sea breeze, surrounded by gorgeous sheen elves. Isn't it just a paradise? He's saying the sheen elves, not sea elves, but it, that, that would be my first time seeing some kind of elf population on beach or on the sea. That, that would be a new mechanic in game. I don't think I have ever seen it in anything, but I like the word sea elves. It should have been sea elves instead of sheen elves. Absolutely not. Entertaining such ideas will get you where it landed me. Locked up behind bars, blasted by the scorching sun, and swallowed up by a tidal wave. And which brings us back to the Sheen Elves. Even if you've never stepped foot on Crescent, you're sure to have heard tell of the Sheen Elves' remarkable beauty? In the last plot as well, in the first chapter, it was with Elves, and they were super hostile to us. The fairest Sheen Elf. In all in Crescent, is no lustrous silken tresses and eyes of sapphire once glimpsed on night unforgettable. <laughs> so you were punished by the Sheen Elves for harassing the princess. That's that's kind of um he took some freedom to uh inter interpret his words, I guess. What? No no no. Lasenny and I are in love. But that domineering brother of hers, Thelendor, Lord of Increscenta, is jealous of our relationship, constantly getting in the way of our love. Take it from me, my friend. Do not provoke Increscent sheen elves. They're arrogant and callous, inflexible in their dogma, regard outlanders as enemies, and torture them indiscriminately. Yeah, th th that's more typical elf lore in all games and liter literature, but... This is some kind of sheen elves that live on the sea, so that's a bit weird. Oh, 
Except for my sweet Lysenia, of course. She's so beautiful and tender. Okay, we can skip that. You must be keen to glimpse Lysenia <laughs> in all her beauteous splendor. Okay. Anyway, let's get into fighting and let's, let's talk about his girlfriend or whatever. This also isn't voice acted. Usually these are voice acted. I don't know if it's because it's new update or why is it not. I like these kind of random things they say usually. They have like some weird weird riddles and they insult me every time. Okay, let's see what you got. Day and night, the vast sea churns, nurturing yet engulfing in its boundlessness. Who is its master? And sometimes they want like a literal answer, sometimes they want some hyper philosophical answer. Okay, uh, let's go with the third answer. I am the god. Arrogant answer. A mortal who has forsaken godhood yet cannot relinquish divine ha hubris. How pathetic, how beautiful. By the child of chaos, this world was once ripped apart, leaving nothing in peace. Not the flowers or the trees, not the skies or the seas. His mark was left behind. Okay, blah blah blah. Do we get stats or free stuff or not? Okay, a little bit XP. Not that much. No need to still. Lucenia! Wait, <laughs> he's just shouting and she appears from the beach. Okay. Justice filled her claims. A radiant, stunning sheen elf bathed in sunlight swans in. Felto. My muse, you look dreadfully careworn. Your time without me must have been quite an ordeal. Felto, the monopole compass. Did you get it? Of course. Although, your brother didn't make it easy. I'll never fail to deliver on my promises to you. Okay, at the start it seemed like this guy was like scamming us. But I think the plot is that this guy is just an idiot and she is scamming him. That's how it sounds, that she used him to try to steal something or something like that. Let, let's see. With this compass, we can break through the miffle and sail far, far away. I know, you must be dying to get out and see the outside world. Give it to me. Give it to me. Okay, that, that doesn't sound good. Hey, darling, you're a tad over eager? But your urgency makes you look so precious. Fret not, I'll give you the compass. Is it some kind of, uh, I don't know, harpy using her looks to um, debate him? Hurry up, give it to me. Her spoken language is so simple that I kind of get the feeling that she's not telling like a human and it's some kind of uh, monster in disguise. The scene before you feels off. The beautiful Sheen Elf seems unmoved by romance and has one sole interest. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm just Holy making compass. random guesses. Okay, yeah, we... I didn't draw any wisdom, so... Okay, yeah, we didn't draw it. Nothing seems amiss as you watch Filto hand Locenia a special compass. The compass is decorated with elaborate runic engravings. The needle glows faintly, pointing toward the vast ocean. Locenia stares at the compass, transfixed. An ecstatic smile spreads across her visage. Oh. I thought you, you said that word visage, but he said like visage. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe maybe it's like English versus American thing. I don't know. I always thought it was like visage. Excellent. Now you 
are no longer needed. Yeah, didn't see that coming. The, the, the only part that is mystery here is still that is she just elf that is scamming him or is it actually some kind of harpy hag or some other monster and it's not even an actual elf? Leave the monocle compass and die. This isn't my Lucidia. Okay, we don't even need to heal them, but it's... Uh... Offending me is uh, it's pointless to put some kind of equipment this early on. I don't have anything good anyway. I'll figure that out later. Sometimes the UI is a bit clunky in Dragonair that you have to fiddle so much with the gear at the start of the battles. It's a little bit too much. Okay, looks like I'm already... It's not easy. I guess I do need to get the gear. Wait, that's a Naga? That, that, that's not even like some kind of harpy hack, it just looks like Naga. But yeah, that kind of was pretty obvious from the dialogue to be at least, or at least it seemed so. Just saying, I definitely didn't know about that beforehand. And Nobody tipped me off or anything like that. My, my Lysenia, she's become a freakish monster. But I want to know what was it? Was it like Naga? That it, I think it would have been better if it was some kind of harpy hack. It doesn't even look like female. And what's the strange magic nexus? What in Adenthia is going on? What does the appearance of the monster and the magic nexus on the beach really mean? It seems you need to investigate. Half of the dead monster's body resembles that of a fish. Maybe it comes from the ocean depths. A transparent membrane clings to the monster's body. Perhaps it was this membrane that allowed it to transform into the guise of a sheen elf? Okay, what do we get? The magic nexus beneath the monster is the same as the one you saw beneath the blue oak. You have the vaguest inkling. If Penultima has brought you here, something sinister is afoot. The shape-shifting monster before your eyes is connected to it all. Under the sun's rays, the monster's body disintegrates, and all signs of the magic nexus vanish in tow. Oh no. It was all a dream. I'm an emotional wreck, but if it'll help you, I can fish something from the metal slurry. Yeah, this is kind of um, very like, um, I guess there's a good plot to the start. I mean, they're putting some kind of show. It's a little bit too obvious and cringe. I mean, this guy is made to made to be like an idiot and like very stupid but i i guess i guess they're trying to spice up the story it is the whole season as well there was a lot of storyline usually i'm the type of gamer that i focus on min maxing builds and boss battles and pvp i'm not really a story guy to be honest unless it's like really good but i hate long Short cutscenes are good, but if there's massive amount of random dialogue about people's <laughs> people's feelings or relationships like this guy is doing, it's a little bit too much for me. I I really want to focus on the uh the gameplay aspect. But that's just me, somebody's gonna prefer this. This is the first time I've seen such a monster. Yeah. I think that was a Naga. I, we didn't get a close look at the monster, but it looked like a naga pretty clearly. But I once read a tome in the veil. It spoke of a creature unique to the Epicane. A creature able to shapeshift, but physically frail, that survives by relying on the strong. Okay, that doesn't sound like a description of naga at all. I think usually the lore with nagas is that they have some kind of feud with a merman, and they're usually some kind of... Uh, chaotic mercenary type of race they are not the like 
people plotting. They are usually like some kind of grunts or mercenaries or that kind of stuff. More more like me melee combat oriented than magical as well. They seek out the mightiest entities within the ocean and offer themselves in service to them. Thus, they are known as abyssal serfs. But this is so peculiar. It was written that abyssal serfs lacked intelligence and were only capable of carrying out the simplest of commands. Yet the one we just encountered could disguise itself as a she-elf and even deceive me without effort. He's saying that, but they made with the dialogue, they made it very obvious that the elf didn't seem to be very intelligent at all. The, the dialogue that it had was very simple. Simple and short, and it was pretty obvious from the start that it didn't seem to be very intelligent being. That's why I thought it was some kind of monster from the start and not an elf. No, that's why I didn't think that it was like an elf trying to scam, scam him, but it more seemed like it was a monster. If it truly is an abyssal surf, that implies it has a new master that has granted it intelligence, and that maybe it is an extra plane of being that transcends the laws of our realm. In his efforts to fend off the encroaching chaos, Lord Thelendorf... Okay, blah, blah, us. blah. I don't you... care about Just, this uh, part. That's... No, oh, yes. You yeah, I don't need to hear about the compass. Take the compass from filter. Oh, I know. Keep hold of it to find my, my friend here. Yeah, it's some kind of magical object. Fair enough. Wait, what? Can we already do? Okay, never mind. Wait, so we can go back to the old parts. But, okay. I guess we can go there to do dungeons from the start and we don't have to unlock them in the story. Okay, that, that makes sense. Right? Yeah, no. I can just teleport to the dungeon right away. But I can... Okay, never mind. I can teleport to the... Like, goblin lairs or whatever we have here. We double check. Yeah, I have to do some goblin lair farming off video after this. Okay, okay. So it's kind of easy to start out the new season that you do unlock everything instantly. So your energy doesn't go to waste and you can instantly start doing this from the get go. And we, okay, we can also do the daily quest and everything. Right away, okay. And the, yeah, we we can get access to the daily boss and so on. You see that? Beyond there lies the city of Increscenta, the Sheen Elf capital. Okay, we got a little bit forest here at least. It seems... A little bit more elfy, but it's still the first time I have seen an elf city at the sea. Sheen elves may be stiff and boring, but they observe moral order. They're not evil. Yeah, that, that's how it usually is with elves in games. Usually they are not like the good guys and they are like uh, neutral people, let's say. But all the same, I'd suggest you not frolic your way into Increscenta, granted. There are affable sorts among the Sheen Elves, but their leader, Lord Thelendor, is not to be trifled with. As for what occurs when you offend him, well, right. Remember what I said? After you. Yes, well, as you rest assured, if danger strikes, I'll come... You're not gonna lie, usually in these kind of RPG games, or even the more plot-oriented ones, where you're Alignment makes big difference. I mean, in Dragon Air, halt! Outlanders are prohibited from entering in Crescent. We we have the different stats, but we actually don't have alignment. But like I was saying, usually elves are like a neutral alignment and not good or evil. 
I usually like to play either uh, chaotic neutral or some kind of evil. That's what I usually play. I mean, I will say chaotic neutral is my real life alignment, but I think it's usually more fun in the games to... Well, if you play chaotic neutral, it usually means that you can team up with both sides. You can play with evil and lawful people. But I, for me, it's usually more fun to be edgy and team up with some kind of dark wizards and go with the side of um, evil. Or at least if you're like not evil, but you're just chaotic. Chaotic means that you usually get to play with mercenary, mercenaries and that kind of stuff instead of like the city guards or the humans only and so on. The Increscenta Guard berates you and prevents you from advancing any further. It appears that if you wish to enter the city, you will have to first speak with the person before you. Wait, okay, what, what's gonna happen if we try to go to the city? Oh, okay. It just doesn't let us because there's a magical, magical barrier until we, like, um... We deal with the elf ego. Wait. How high level is... Okay, wait. Okay, but we're level 1. This will be an easy fight later, but not right now. Alarm flashes across the Sheen Elf Guard's face as you draw closer. Outlanders shouldn't be able to land on Encrescent. However did you get here? I was teleported here by a mysterious magic nexus. Our Lord established the mythal with his very own hands to ensure the safety of these lands for over a hundred years. Yet you want me to believe there's a nexus that brings you right inside? Yeah. What a poor excuse if I've ever heard one. Outlander, Sheen Elf Law does not punish innocent visitors, but the same cannot be said of liars. He's calling us like uh, Outlander, which sounds like some kind of uh, RPG version of illegal immigrant or something like that. And then calling us a liar. You clearly want to enter the capital. What is your intent? My intent is to uh, smuggle myself in the capital and not pay any taxes. Smooth talking won't help you. Spare your breath for the tribunal. Goodness, you really are in it up to your neck. I'm here to lend a hand. So, you're Filto's partner in crime. I'll be taking you in together. Okay, let's... Let's heal them up so that we don't lose this battle. I already almost lost the last one and... I didn't gear up anybody because... Uh, it seems kind of pointless to put some... Level, like... Some white items that haven't been even upgraded. I think we can probably still win this battle, but we have to get to the gearing part instantly because Dragonair is pretty hard game that you can't just face roll even the early parts of it. You actually have to start putting on items and upgrading them and upgrading your champions and so on. Okay, it wasn't too hard. Child of Chaos. Niche. White Death? I think that's like a real life, I mean obviously it's not intended, but that's like a, that's the name of some like famous Finny sniper on the World War II, so that kind of sounds like a Finnish reference, but I'm sure it's not. Okay, 
Oh, come on, even more dialogue. I, I, just let me in the city instead of all the dialogue, come on. Too much. Okay, I, I, I guess, I guess that's the introduction to this, uh, the story of the new season. I think we're gonna leave it at this for this episode. I'm gonna have to actually do some proper grinding of video and farm the um, the goblin. What's it even called? Goblin lair. I was gonna say goblin camp, but goblin lair. I'm gonna do some of that off video and upgrade some artifacts and use the materials that we got from the missions that other people already did that I joined on my first session. But anyway, if Dragonair seems interesting to you, you probably already pay if you watch this video to be honest, but download Dragonair from the link in description. I'm sure it's a sponsored video, thanks a lot for them. I'm sure they will be happy if you do. And that's it. Have a nice day. See ya.